Walker. I'm the principal engineer with Code Journeyman. Uh, that's me, Lee, at Code Journeyman, Drupal Nougat, and also a plug, Drupal Camp Chattanooga. Um, that's in three weeks. Um, just a few hours from here. Uh, I have stickers, I'm looking for more presentations and sponsors as well. The, uh, just like everyone in the Drupal community, everyone leaves into the last minute. So you organize these camps and you don't know whether they're financially viable until like the last two days. So if people can sign up early, that would be great. So it's DrupalCampChattanooga.com. So really there's two parts to this, Search API, which is the basis of replacing built-in Drupal search, and then using Solar to plug into Search API and use Solar as the back end for it instead. We'll talk about Search API first, and we'll, we'll talk about Solar in the, the last part. Right, does anyone here actually use the built-in Drupal search? Yeah, I didn't think so. That's what you get, the feeling you get. You ask for ice cream, and you get a cold corn dog. And I don't like corn dogs, so you can substitute your food on a stick there. Um, that's basically what, every time you look at Drupal search, the basic Drupal search, that's the face you make. Um, there's very little you can do to improve it. You can skin it to look better, but the actual results that come out, there's, there's not a lot you can do about that. So, someone gives you a corn dog, but what you really wanted was ice cream. It's one size fit all, fits all. Um, not very configurable. It's the last resort. You tend to not think about it when you're building sites. You tend to worry about the content types and the pieces, and then, oh, we need a way for people to actually find this stuff. Um, so if none of you use built-in search, what do you use? You all got it. Views, right? You do views and exposed filters. You build your own search. Um, views, exposed filters. It's much better. You can now use all the great views plugins, but really you're still, it's not really search still. Not what, what is that, that useful? But, at least you have ice cream now. Yeah, you, you're not, no longer sucking on a cold corn dog, but you're still, what you're getting is plain vanilla ice cream. Whereas search, I'm sure you've had clients say this to you, I want this to work, na na na, you know, like Google does. Or, I want this to work like Facebook. These tend to be the things. Um, my response to that is, write me a Google size check and I'll give you Google size functionality. Um, So what we do, we, we decide to use Search API instead. Um, the great thing about it is you have a what they call a search server and you pick some, that one of them can be solar, one of them can be built into the database. And I'll show you the database one first because you can use that on a site right now to replace all of your search. So you can build, then you build an index on it. And the index is actually, you index the content you're trying to search. So you can actually manipulate the index to only do certain things. So you can build an index just for users. So it only indexes user content. And you build it, so you can have one for users, one just that searches products, one that just searches your blog, all off the same backend. So you can build multiple indexes and attach them to the search API. And the big thing is this, you can now weight them. So if you type a word in and that word appears in the title, yeah, that's, going to, that's going to be worth more in the scoring than if it appeared somewhere in the body. Um, when you mess with these, you have to rebuild your index. There's a lot of finessing with your index. You, you get the first one, first index built and you weight things. And then you will look at the searches and your client will say, oh, I kind of want that one higher and I kind of want this. And then you go back and you weight things slightly differently. When you do that, you have to rebuild your index. So, messing with Search API generally means spending a lot of time deleting and rebuilding your indexes. You'll do it multiple, multiple times a day. That's okay, you can have a cup of tea. If you're only doing 10, you know, two, 3,000 items, it will index them really quickly. If you've got a lot more, it can take a while. Also, you can use Facet API, the Facet API. If you guys have used Newegg or Amazon, you stick a search in, down the left-hand side, um, it says, from this manufacturer there are eight, from 
between this price range, there are so many. And it actually tells you how many results are in it. That's faceted search. Um, the great thing is you simply turn it on and you tell the faceted search what things you're interested in from your index and it will build the facets for you. And they're blocks and they just appear on the page. It's not this great big thing. As long as you build your index right and get that correctly, the facets just come out of it. Um, it's still, you still use views to build it, but instead of saying I want content of type and pulling fields in, the actual index turns up as I want you to build a view of something and you'll see the index as a, a, under content, content or users, and one of them is your, your search API index. That does mean you're not actually talking to tables, so you can't then go oh, I'm going to join this to the user table and ask for some extra fields. You, you get what's in the index. If you want some extra fields, you have to add them to the index, rebuild your index, and then they'll, they'll come out. So now you've got search API, some faceted search. You've got something better than vanilla ice cream. Ice cream with sprinkles, it's better than ice cream. Ask any five-year-old. But this still works in the database. So you're still talking to the Drupal database and Drupal is going off looking for things inside its database. Um, and it's doing a lot of work. So it can get, it can affect the performance of a site quite quickly. But first we're gonna do a demo without, without using Solar, just straight up what you can download now and put on and make it work. So let's fall out of this. I think I'll just mirror the screen, it's probably easier. Okay. Right, so all I've got here is a basic download of Drupal 7. Um, I've told the uh, develop module to generate me a bunch of fake content and fake users and fake tags. All I've done here is put my own image in for one of them. Oh, there we go. So, Solar's not running, which is what it's looking for. There we go. So to start off with, let's look at the modules. So you will basically have Solar Search, no, not Solar Search. You will have the search API turned on. You'll notice here I've actually turned core search off. I don't, I'm not using core search anymore. There's no reason a cron job should go and index things that I'm, not, I'm never using. Um, the one thing I have for the in this database search, search API DB, basically says I'm using the, in, I'm using the database to do the searches and build the indexes. I'm not using some other service, not Solar. Um, there's also Elasticsearch, which is built on the same engine Lucene as Solar, but Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch is becoming one of those. They're running side by side. There's an Elasticsearch module, so if you're using Search API and decide to use Elasticsearch, you can just use it, click over, and everything you've built will now work on the new service. So, haven't really used Elasticsearch that much, um, but the things I see about it are actually quite cool. So I've there's also some things that it will give you. This autocomplete, um, there's facets, there's a spell check, and a current, a current search block. So it gives you information about the things. You literally turn them on, and now under configuration you will see uh, search and metadata and a search API. So you can create different servers. So the top one here, I've created a local database server and I've put one index in it, so basically I've done a default node index. But you can build an index, and I can have a user index. Can't spell. Um, and attach it to, to look at users. And I pick a server to attach to, so I'll attach it to the database and create an index. And now I pick the fields that I want 
that the user entity has that I want to be indexed, to be searchable on. Anything in the index is searchable. Anything not in the index, it can't see. So we can say we want the name and the email. Uh, what else is in here? Uh, that's probably about all you'll search for, pe for people on. Oh, actually, I should go back. Let's. Uh, we should talk about. There is a type, so you can pick. Generally, full text is what you end up using, unless it is quite clearly an integer. But there's a boost here, so I can say if the person types the uh, actually types his name in properly. I can't hit the right thing. There we go. It's worth eight, eight times as much as if he types something in his, in his email. So that's they come up with the search ranking. They actually, excuse me, when you do the search. It will use all the fields, give them all the value, add all those values together, and then order them in that to say which ranks the highest. Um, one of the things you can do is actually spit that value out to the page, just so you get an idea of what's going on. So, similarly, if it was looking at a node, you can say the title's worth eight times as much as something in the body, or whatever bonus you happen to want to give it. Um, I tend to use eight for title because it it sticks near the top. So I can save the changes, but right now I've got nothing. I've just told the index how to do this. So you, here you see, you can, you can, then you have other filters that you can work on. So you can say only index people that aren't admins and things like that. So you have the ability to basically click a role filter. Um, then they basically set filters. Sometimes you, we don't want to, we want to ignore case. We want to strip any HTML out. We want to, um, the stop words um, tends to be um, a list of things that you don't want indexed. Generally, it's swear words. People don't want swear words to turn up in their search ever. So they have a big list of stop words dot text that say don't use these, and they never ever get indexed. So you can't find them. We'll just leave it like that. Actually, we should put we'll ignore case. Ignore case is generally a good, and we'll filter. We'll suck out HTML filter. Um, every time you click one, you get a pr processing order because if you do multiple things to it, sometimes the order makes a difference. So you can drag them up and down and, and tweak it. This is where all the tweaking of your index comes from. Um, I guess facets aren't terribly useful for users. But let's go back to the index. So now I have a user index. I can, it says there are zero items indexed on this server. I think there's only 50 users, but let's try that. I'll queue all items for indexing. You can just queue them and cron will pick them up in time. But for our intensive purposes, we're just gonna kick it and say, go ahead and do it, because there's only a few. So 52, it indexed 52 users. So now you have an index of user data, but no way to get at it. Um, so you build a view. Now I've built a couple already. Um, I think the search me was a, a node view. So I built an index. Let's go, let's build a new one. Just to show you. So we had we had an index. We created a new index and gave it a name. So if we add a view, now you see the content. Now you'll see here my index has turned up. So now I have a user index. I can build a view of user index. Call it user search sounds good. And we will just oh didn't get that name. Let's do that. User index create a page. Now you're used to sort of adding fields here and seeing fields from content types. Now when you do the add field, it's what fields you've added to your index. So frequently here you go, oh, I've got a user ID, I'll join that to the user table and pull some extra information out of something else. Uh, you can't do that. You're actually talking to a search index and you can't join it to other tables. Um, a lot of people, a lot of time you think of uh, views as a, as a SQL builder, and it, and it is, but it also indexes other things. 
also does other things. This is one of those other things. But there's a user ID. So if I look at indexed user, there's a bunch of different things in here. There was a username. And we did the, did the email. We will take the email and we will take the name. Just take So we're getting out. So user zero anonymous. Um, user ID. These are, these are all these are all auto-generated test data. But we want to filter based off the name. And we can expose the operator. Now we can search on, I don't know, what's this guy's name? S-L-E. So we can find the one guy, but that's gone through the index. If we have a look at the index for that I've already built for um, search, search API, there's a default node index. So I told it to go and index these nodes. The fields are put in, so the title is worth five times as much as 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 like the body. The date created, the date changed, the author, how many comments it's got, um, and then the main body text. Now, sometimes there are tables joined to this that you're like, I'm missing some fields. Um, if you look down in related fields, some extra ones will appear here. Um, and then you can add fields and then the multiple, like the body is a classic one. Body doesn't show up in this until you go down here and do body. And the body gives you text summary and text format. So we've indexed some things there. Um, and we've, when we go to facets, we can say, I want, when I'm searching for content, down the side, I want a group, I want a group by author. So show me by Fred or whatever his name is. Do it by content type and do it by the tags. So I turn those, because I've indexed these items, they turn up in my facet list. Now I can check them and say, do that. Come back to autocomplete. So, so I built a view, which is to search me. I've told it to index everything. It's pretty ugly right now. And what I've done on the, uh, if we look at the, the blocks, I've basically dropped some faceted search blocks on here. When you've created those facet blocks, they appear in your block index. So, because those are facets, you'll see them facet API search service, then the index name, so default node index is what I called it, and then author. Um, so all I did was drop them on the page. So if you go to the search me, I now have, there are five, the search is so by content type, there are 54 articles and 46 basic pages. They're filtered by author and filtered by the random tags that have been generated. So I can say there's only 10 with SW tag, and now here's all my 10. And then, oh look, there's, there's two more that actually have SW and TH. And they have these little, it's pretty ugly how they look, but it's obvious how they work. Even Amazon still uses it like that, because I haven't seen a better way of showing it yet that's useful. Um, so you can actually type. One of the things you can turn on with it is this, is this autocomplete. So as you start typing, it gives you suggestions. And all of these are in the index. So it actually goes and looks all of those up for you. That's just straight out of the box. You literally turn it on and say autocomplete on that field. And that is all. If you go back to the search, search API, when you turn the um, when you turn the autocomplete on, you get this extra tab. And you say, autocomplete the search me view, please. Thank you very much. And it will look at the, um, it, says it works out that that's what you're talking about. 
So it's actually quite useful for it to give you, oh, I didn't even know VU had anything, but. So basically that's the search. That is actually hitting the database and doing a lot of work on the database because we're using the in database one. But after saying that, it's not doing really any much more work than standard Drupal searches. At least we're indexing them together and putting them in one great big table and not doing lots of crazy joins. What else have we got? So we've got facets. Again, you install the Facet API, turn it on, the Facet tab appears, anything you've added to your index is now an ability to click and produce a Facet. You say, I want to Facet on this, I want to Facet on that. Hit save, they now turn up as blocks. You put them on the page where you want them. That's significantly better, straight away, I mean, just Faceted search on its own is significantly better than just a view search. Just a straight up vanilla view search. Or vanilla with sprinkles, if you like. You can sell that to a client. You can say, oh, we can build that, we can do the and we've got facets. You know, and I always like the terms, yeah, I mean, Amazon does it like this, or Newegg does it like this. And look, we can do that for you. And it's generally better than you see a lot of other, other systems built. There's one other thing, so we've got, yeah, I think it's facets. There are things like, um, Solar gives you some extra pieces, which is, it will do a more like this. If any of you have ever built a Drupal Commerce site, and you want a related products block, there isn't one. People tend to have to curate that themselves. There's not, there's not like a more like this. Um, it's actually quite hard to do. Um, there's a friend of mine who's been trying to do it for a long time, eventually he built it out of views, but he is kind of having to touch all the products and do things to the products to relate them. Instead of just uploading something and letting the system work out how it relates, he's actually having to do some form of curation on, the, on a system, which means you now have to manage it and look after it. And hopefully they'll pay you for that. Um, but that's an ongoing thing. No, they won't pay you for that, just so you know. Um, and it's, all, it's very, very hard to teach that to the client to look after himself. It will just slowly get worse over time and it won't work. Solar actually has a more like this. Once you've indexed the fields, it knows which field to look at and it works a more like this. You turn more like this on, it's a block. You drop the block on any product page. When it loads up, it, tri it triggers off the URL and goes find other things that are similar to this. And related, effectively related products will, will, will appear. And again, you can tweak that because it's based off the index. So when you boost certain values and things, you can constantly tweak that to what you need. Um, yeah, you'll, be, you'll get sick of building indexes. The, especially with like 100,000 items on, you're kind of like, ah, I did so many changes. I've either got to wait for cron to run, or I'm just gonna delete the index and tell it to re-index and off you go. Oh, I'm not, I'm not powered up. But that's basic out of the box. You don't need solar. You just download the modules you need, turn them on, get a little bit of configuring, understand that there's a server, which is your in-database, and an index, which is where you put all the information that you want to search on. And then you can have multiple indexes on one server. So you can download the latest version. Um, I have been using like Solar 1. Point, one of my clients is on Solar 1.3 from years and years ago, and it's it's a pain in my butt. But they won't they won't upgrade. Um, I think I'm going to convince them to be able to do that soon. But there are some older versions out there. There's a lot of information on Solar, and you can play with Solar quite easily. Um, you can issue commands to Solar through the URL, so you can literally type commands in and watch information come back out. And it tends to come out in XML. Let's go ahead and fire up. Now, all I've done here is download the latest 4.9 version. You don't, there's all these instructions online about sticking Solar inside Tomcat and starting Tomcat up, and because it's a Java application. 
to run a local one, to actually run a local, you don't need any of that. It actually comes with Jetty, which is a, uh, a, a container to, for running Java services, and you can, you can start it up. So if we go into Solar, you will see there's an example. Um, it's example system built up already. So in Solar, there's a collection one, then conf. These are the XML files that configure it. At this point, everyone goes, oh my god, I don't know what the heck to do. How am I supposed to configure Solar? You don't actually have to. Um, in the search API Solar module, if you look inside, there's this solar, dot, solar conf. Then there's a version for three, a version for four. You're looking for. You copy all of those. You paste that's a collection one conf. You paste them in there. It now knows how to index Drupal. That's it. That's all you have to do. So it, part of it is finding where that conf is because it's different in three than it is in four. They actually messed around with it a little bit. Four's a lot better. So now, I can java minus jar, which is run a jar, this start.jar. And that's all I have to do, and you'll get a whole bunch of log for j logging appearing here. By default, it starts on 89.83. So localhost 89.83 slash solar. No? Is it 89.83? I wonder if I... I tend to run three, four solar instances at the same time, so I have to move the ports. So let's see if this is the default one. The way to, the, the simple, and you just control C to get out of it, that's all you've got to do there. There's the jetty. There's a jetty.xml. If you search for port, it's, oh, it's 89.84, okay. I was one port off. That was the, it tells you the port here. You just change that to the port you want, run the start Java, minus jar, start the jar again, and you have solar running locally. So let's... Okay, nope, no, too far. Example. So it's the example one. I never start up my own, I never run my own collection, I don't worry about any of that. To get it working, and you, you expect to see this, which is good. It's 8984 is what it was. And Solar is up and running. And you'll see there was something called Collection 1, and this is it here. Whoops. You can, you can type into here to do searches, so you can actually say, oh, I'm looking for things, and it will actually, this is the solar interface that it spits out. You have to be careful with solar, because if you install it actually on a production server, it has no, anyone anywhere can talk to it, it'll do anything. You can say, delete all my indexes, mess with things, it will quite happily say, sure, you have to lock all the ports down yourself. So it is the most pants down to the internet thing I've ever seen but they deliberately made it that way. Uh, they warn you. So to use a, to use solar now, we have the solar done. We will go to search API. In this case, there's, there's a solar one here, it will show you. So local solar, it's enabled. We're connecting to, it will ask you to type this in, but um, let's just create a new one. We'll create, we'll create a new one. Let's create a new server. Add a server. So, local server number two. It's, and it, here again, it asks you are you doing it in database or are you connecting to solo? I'm connecting to solo. Was that a server? Yes. So, 8984. So, my local host, it's on this port. And you'll see here, it actually says the Jetty default is 89.83 and Tomcat uses 80.80 by default. If you're used to using Tomcat, then stick it in Tomcat just like the Java container, just like you normally do. Um, but there's no need, 
when you're trying to learn how to use solo and things to go through all that trouble if you if you don't do Java in the first place. Configuring Tomcat is, is fine if you do it all the time, but it can be one of those real pain in the butt things because it's lots of XML configuration files. It's much easier to download it and run it on Jetty, and it all works. Okay. So search API. So we now have a new. And we have to create an index to go with that. Let's reuse this one. So I've indexed it in exactly the same way. This is, this is no different than doing it in the database, except now you're telling it to do it, so, telling Solar to do it. Um, you'll get the autocomplete and the facets in exactly the same way. So all you've all you've done is say, don't use the database. Use Solar now, please, and it's over there. It's actually on my local machine. And if we the Solar search one, you build a view in the same way. It has the facets in the same way. There's a couple of things that are very useful, which is if I just type Ben AM, this doesn't do it. <laughs> There is a block, I believe there's a block called, let's just make sure the module's turned on, there's the, there's the spell check, which will say, we type stuff into Google and it's kind of funny, it goes, did you mean this? And gives you a link to say search on that instead. Solar will give you that as a block that you can drop on. So as you're doing a your search, it'll say, uh, you typed something, did you really mean lorem ipsum? Did you mean something else? It will actually look in your, it actually looks at your content and suggests other things that are in your content. And all of, you think that would take forever to, to look up. But because it's solar, you handle this information to solar, and it does all this work in the background. It, it pre-calculates a bunch of things. So when you ask it questions, it goes, here you go. Here's all the answers immediately. You don't actually have to wait for it to ch chug through the database. And one of, the, I mean, one of the greatest things is simply this, the more like this. When you turn more like the more like this on, you create a view that's just a block, and tell it to tell it to look at the URL. And so the more like this has found other things that that, that either the title's similar, or it's done by the same author, or it has the same tags. And that is, if you look at view, there's a more like this. And again, you you're not doing. You're doing Drupal things. You're using views. You're just letting Solar do the hard work of, of doing the indexing and all those calculations for you. So, just created a block, and you'll see there's a contextual filter more like this that basically says, get the content ID from the URL. So, how do I know what I'm supposed to do? It's like, grab the, the node ID from the URL and put some information on. Um, that is turn it on. Turn it on, create the view, turn them all like this on, create the view, and you're done. That is a, a, a product display that is other related products. And I know people that have spent months trying to get that to work. And I'm like, if you have solar, <laughs> and the, the client won't pay for it. Like, uh, it's hard to do without some form of active, constant manipulation. When new content comes in, you just let Solar handle it. The way you do it with Solar is you just index it and boost the index, the value of the fields and the index by different things until you get the value out of it you want. Let's demo without solar and with solar I kind of jumped ahead of myself okay the reason to use solar performance 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 it's going to be so much faster um, first time you have two and a half million nodes in your solar index and you want facets and to filter and do things and you type it and the page just instantly comes back and you're like that's too fast it can't possibly have looked at everything Absolutely, yes, it can. Because solar—that's the beauty of solar—is it looks at all of those things and calculates those 
ready to go. So it hands you the facets back, everything. Yeah, the more like this, uh, geospatial search is absolutely fantastic. If you've ever got to find someone, you know, I, I want to find, I don't know, coffee houses within five miles of here, um, or coffee houses on this side of the river five miles from here that you can kind of draw a geospatial area around. Um, it's absolutely fantastic, this. So the, the did you mean as well. The geospatial search has come on a long, a long, long way. Uh, in Solar 3, it did geospatial, and you could pull all that out, and you can order them by distance. So this is the closest, and the next, 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 and you put it in, it comes out in kilometers, but you can you convert it. Um, the one thing it couldn't spit out was the actual distance, but it could sort it on the distance. It was actually impossible in version 3 to put the distance in the results. Just, it could tell you it was closer, but it couldn't tell you actually how far away it was. And they fixed that in 4. Um, version 3 hasn't, I think, don't think, think been updated since like Christmas. Um, and version 4 gets like monthly updates, new things, um, very actively worked on. And this is why Solar says, the guys at Solar say, if a use case requires a person to type words into a search box, you want a text search engine like Solar. And, yeah. If you're typing text in and then saying to a relational database, I want you to find some text in a relational database and often go and do things, it's not, it's not doing that. It's trying to, it wants relational ideas. You're like, no, 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 just go and find this for me. It's not very good at that. Solar is fantastic at that. Let's have a look. So, I have to skip one. Yeah, okay. It is Java. You have to learn to run it. Um, Java, Java system, Java services tend to be a lot more resource heavy than what we're used to using Drupal. Um, if you do Pantheon, if you have the hundred dollar a month better, you get it. There's, a, there's one set up for you. It's you. They already have a solar service, you connect to it and you do it. They handle all of that for you. Same with Acrea. Acrea has, has a solo already set up, ready to go. So if you're using either of those services and you're on the, like the $100 a month plan, which is basically where you should be for, for a proper website that will need solar, then you already have it and you're probably not using it. You don't probably even know you have it. You've got Varnish Box as well, you might even be configuring that. That all comes in the price. One of the great things, this is what we make use of extensively, I do a lot of work for Oak Ridge National Labs, uh, and they do a, um, the two sites I work on is um, a biofuel knowledge distribution framework. So they try and predict how much biomass there is to turn into biofuel, and they project that 30, 40, 50 years into the future. And the other one is what they call Curie, which is a really ugly site, but it's spent nuclear fuel rod siting. When you've got spent nuclear fuel rods, you have to put them somewhere. And there's a lot of knowledge on that that they need to share with each other. And most of that knowledge is actually not put into Drupal, it's written into documents, added to a node, and we still need to index the data in that. And there's something called Tika. And Tika is another Java service. And Tika will open up Word documents and PDF documents and index the text in those documents. Then that turns up in your solar search. You can actually, can actually search for phrases inside a Microsoft Word document attached to a note. They will do that. It's actually remarkable. The first time you see it, you're like, that's great. I didn't think you could do that. You absolutely can do that. Again, you've got synonyms, so you can say, cookie and cake are the same thing to me. So if someone types cookie in, cakes will come out as well. You can also say, but biscuits, there's only one type of biscuit. So there are no biscuits, nothing, nothing is a synonym with biscuit. And these, you can mess these together. And again, you can ignore some words. So generally, you ignore them. The, the stop words is what it's called, are generally a big list of swear words. Also, the promoted results. Your clients will almost guarantee, almost guarantee you, they'll have you build this thing and they go, Ooh, oh, but I want this one at the top. This one's always got to be at the top. You're like, well, that's not how it works. 
it's being indexed. So like what Google does, because they've effectively got promoted ads at the top. That's basically what that is, promoted results. You can give something a bonus and make it float to the top. Um, you can just tell Solo I want to do that and then say, I don't want you to do that anymore. And also, it does stemming. So, baseballs, you type the word baseball in, it will find similar ones, it will pluralize them, it will, it rips out, just some tokenizing, it rips out simple words A, the, of. Also, turns mu into u and e acute into the regular e, so you can just type them in, you don't have to go and find the peculiar ones. Um, so yeah, and, and synonyms again, doctor and practitioner are the same thing. All you have to do, after you've built your circuit, there's no reason you need to go straight to solar. You can use the in, the, 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 in, the sorry, the search API in database one. Then create a new server, create a new index for it. Like here I am, I'm running two at the same time. I've got one which is local and one which is running my solar. Create new indexes for them. And again, the, the spell check is, did you really mean? Um, is you turn it on, and it's a block, you put it in your search results. Which is when you type something in, what's in the did you mean is actually stuff out of your index. So it's not just said, did you mean Fred? When there's, and if you click Fred, there'll be zero results. That doesn't happen. If you click the Fred, there will always be results. Which is also a great thing about facets. Facets will never give you a zero result. Everyone's done it and they've typed a search in and they've got, they got zero results found. That's possibly the worst thing ever for a user to get zero results. So you start, you type something relatively generic into the search, facets come up, and then you start digging down. Just like you're shopping on Amazon. That's exactly what happens on Amazon. So now, with solar turned on, you end up with ice cream, which is much better than what you started with. You can, when, when the client says, I want ice cream, you can give them that instead of a cold corn dog. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, anyone, any questions? Um, so if you have solar set up, is it possible, like you say you had solar running on a separate server? Yes. It was configured in Drupal. If the solar server went down, would it fail over, or could you allow fail over to the local index? The, the, that's a very good question. The question is, could it fail over from a solar server to an in-database server. I guess you'd have to build both and keep both indexes up. And I guess you could write a rule that would trigger that. I don't think there's anything... I don't really, that's actually a really good, really good idea. <laughs> um, I don't tend to see the solar services going down. Um, if the solar's gone down and you're on Pantheon or Acrio, probably other things have gone down as well and you've got bigger things to worry about rather than your search doesn't work. Um, but I... There's no reason you couldn't do that. It seems to me you could write a rule quite easily to do that. If high availability is a concern, solar can be sharper across multiple services. Yes. And the, solar has scaling it when you put lots of them and shard it. Um, solar can get quite complex quite quickly to do that. But that's where your DevOps problem, and hopefully you've got someone that can deal with that. Which is why Elasticsearch has become this big thing. Because you can fire up an Elasticsearch instance, fire up another one and say it's in the same group. They talk to each other and say hi and start sharding automatically. If you look at the, the, uh, the web page for one, it knows about the other ones. It tells you the other one's health and where, how they sharded as well. And you don't have to tell it to shard, it just starts doing it. So if you keep starting them up, they'll keep connecting to each other, talking to each other and automatically sharding things across it. Um, it's really quite impressive when you look at it and go, but I'm not doing any, just fire another one, fire up another one, fire up another one. And you watch them talk to each other and automatically configure themselves, um, which has the DevOps guys just salivating. They're like, that's just fantastic. And again, Elasticsearch is built on, is built on Lucene, so it's a, it's a sibling of Solo. And there's an Elasticsearch module for Search API. So if you, if you build your things in Search API and you learn how to drive Search API, you can run it in the database. Then you say, now I have a solar instance, I'll go and play on the solar. So you switch it over to solar, everything you've learned and everything you've built just switches over to another service. You're not doing anything new from scratch. Then when Elasticsearch comes along, you go, ah, we'll move it on to Elasticsearch. And everything you've built and all the way you do it, again, moves on to the next system. Then whatever comes after Elasticsearch, 
he says, predicting the future. There'll be a, uh, a search API, the next best thing in search, module to plug into search API. Now for Solar and things, Drupal 8, because there's, there's also Apache Solar module. There's the Apache Solar module and the search API module. The Apache Solar module only works with Solar. And it's generally what you end up using a lot on Drupal 6. Um, it's there for Drupal 7. For Drupal 8, the guys working on that are actually working on the Search API Solar module instead. So Search API is how, where it's going. So don't use the, I still support like three sites with Apache Solar on it. Um, we are moving to Search API. Um, any other questions, sorry? So you don't need the Apache Search, um, Apache Solar module, you can just use the, in Drupal 7, you can just use the Search, Search API. API? Yes, absolutely, you do not need the, uh, an instance of Solar for that to work. You don't get them more like this, you don't get the, which is kind of the spell checking, you don't get, you don't get more like this, you don't get the did you mean. Those are actually things that, that Solar give you as a service. But it gives you the autocomplete, and it gives you the facets by turning the facet API on. So yeah, run in the database. And if you're, there's no reason at all why you shouldn't, if you currently have your search either done using basic Drupal search or views, you really should be using the search API in the database. Because in the event that Solar does crop up, the, the, the ability to index and build them and build separate indexes for things is just fantastic. Um, it's play with it, download it. You can literally download it onto a basic version of Drupal like I did. Create some fake content, have a go. It's not as complicated as your first thing. Because when you first start out, you're like, oh my goodness, look at all the tabs, there's all these options. Um, there's a lot of information online about Search API. Um, yeah, the best thing I can say is download it, plug it in and play with it. And very quickly, you'll see it works very, very well. And then you'll be like, it's one of those things that like, really, really? Why have, been, why, have I, why have I ever been using anything else? Because you're gonna have to build a view anyway for your search, because the basic Drupal search is so bad. You're gonna do it in views anyway. So you're gonna build your search API in views anyway. So you might as well get the extra weighting and the facets, because you, you're going to build a view. So why not build a view using Search API? It gives you so much more for very little more effort. Um, we have sort of an internal user you know, thing that we, I go and type in, you know, I'm looking for a Joe Schmo, and okay. it pops up Joe Schmo's office location and everything like that. That's not in my Drupal site. But I'd like to be able to still search that. I don't know. I don't even know what it's written in. I haven't looked at it. But um, is, is there a way to kind of merge those searches together? That um, you have to be able to get to the data somehow to shove it in the index. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I, I forgot to mention was one of the things you get out of it is a snippet that you can say I want 600 characters of text out and I want that, my search terms highlighted. Um, and that's one of the things you can get me a snippet and throw it out. So you don't, so you don't actually have to load the nodes either. So if you're looking for a bunch of things, the, what comes back from Solar, you theme the thing and put it on the page. You don't actually hit your database at that point and load any extra nodes. You just theme what comes back. Um, then your search is just super, super fast. The how you would index things that you can't get to. <laughs> uh, I can get to them. I just don't know what format they're in right now. I okay. You know they're. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if Solar is, is strictly sort of Drupal content kind of thing, or...? Uh, no, it, it actually has nothing. You can use Solar on anything. This, this is just Solar with Drupal. Um, you could index it. That's a good question. It, that's entirely dependent on your implementation, I'm afraid. That's a it depends answer, I'm sorry. Um, Maybe if you could suck the, the data in somehow through feeds and expose it to Drupal and, and have it. Because otherwise you're building an index a bit at a time from different things. And when it goes wrong or it doesn't work quite right, you're not going to know what to touch. 
Um, maybe you could suck that information into Drupal somehow and index that. I think indexing it from multiple places might. I just found uh, this the other day, uh, and there's a module called Sarnia, S-A-R-N-I-A. -A. Okay. And the project says Sarnia allows a Drupal site to interact with and display data from solar cores with arbitrary schemas, mainly by Drupal building views. This is useful for solar cores that index large external, i.e. non-Drupal data sets oh, okay. that are either aren't practical to store in Drupal or already indexed in solar. Okay, so, so what you've done then, you've actually indexed the other data using solar, and now you tell Drupal to look at that index. Yes. Yeah. That would probably work. That's assuming you've set solar up already <laughs> for that. But you can, the sheer amount of things that solar can deal with is, is incredible. Okay. Any other questions? So uh, as you showed us how you started solar with Jetty. Do you have, like, to allow that process to run when the server boots, do you have to like, write a shell script? Uh, you would not run it in Jetty so on, uh, on a live server. That was kind of like, if you want to actually play with solar on your local and actually ability to fire up solar and interact with it, you can do that simply by firing it up inside Jetty. And you would generally have some kind of server container, Tomcat, right. WebLogic, whatever, and you drop it in there. So like a separate server running just solar, rather than installing a patch of server or a patch of solar on an existing server where I've had Drupal sites. So. Yeah, frequently it's on a different server. Um, yeah, it just, it's one of those services where I, I just talk to it and it does things and it's on another server, don't worry about load on it. It's, you can't talk to it externally. It's a bit like putting your database on a different server, a similar kind of thing. It's just a service that runs somewhere, it can run anywhere, it doesn't really, it doesn't really care. Any other questions? Well, thanks very much guys, I hope you learned something.